So you've worked hard in school. You finally made the grade. But the big question is, what are you going to do after you've graduated from college? So what's going on, guys? It's Yaziah, your success strategist. And in today's video, I'm going to give you three key lessons that you should receive on how to make the right moves after you graduate from college. This is a very critical point in your life. Yeah, you might have gotten the grades in school, but you know what? The real world is something totally different. And you might feel like you have your handle on things, but in today's video, I wanna make sure that you do. So make sure to subscribe and let's get into number one. So the first thing that you really need to do after you've graduated from college is to begin focusing on building up your emergency fund. I'm gonna say that again. This is super important because everything that we're going over in today's video will either make or break the next five to 10 years of your life, if not more, whether or not you choose to follow this. The first thing that you really need to focus on doing is building up your emergency fund. An emergency fund is the savings account that you will use to cover any emergency expenses that come up along the way. Because guess what? You never know when life happens. You never know when a rainy day is going to hit. And one of the biggest reasons why so many of us graduate from college and we struggle after we get out is because that's the first real time that we've ever managed money in our life. Yeah, you might have been playing around with a checking account here and a savings account. You might have even had a credit card. But because of the fact that there may have been other bits of help along the way, you never really learn the principles and the disciplines of how to be able to maneuver off the money that's in your account until you have graduated. Now, when I graduated from Baylor University, why am I saying this? Because the first thing that I did was splurge. Shop till I drop, ball out, right? <laughs> I wanted to show everybody that I was now successful. I wanted to show everybody that I had made it. So sure enough, I'm fired up. Man, I'm about to get my first real paycheck in life. I'm about to start going on vacations. I'm buying $1,000 leather couch. I'm buying a big screen TV. I'm living in a nice neighborhood and community. I'm just doing it big. I felt like $50,000 coming from where I come from it was like $500,000. And I never took the time to put the right ducks in a row. I never took the time to be able to set aside some money away before I really did anything else. Listen, after you graduate from college, if somebody wants to give you a graduation gift, you can use some of the gifts that they're giving you to be able to celebrate. When it comes to the money that you're going to start making after you graduate from college, you really need to focus on pocketing that. And I would suggest that you have three to six months worth of emergency expenses in a savings account that you don't touch outside of emergencies. Don't just operate off of your checking account alone and feel like that's going to get you by because the minute that you find yourself in a very bad jam, you're only going to start taking out more debt, whether it be a credit card, whether it be a loan, whether it be borrowing money from other people. This is only going to dig you a deeper grave once you're in the real world and you're trying to get a handle on every other part of life. You're already trying to get a handle on your work situation. You're already trying to get a handle on your time management now that you're you know, balancing operating at your job while trying to have a social life. You've got to try to keep things as easy as possible. That's the reason why you first got to set up a financial cushion. The reason why this is super important for you to do right after you graduate from college is because six months after you graduate from college, guess what's about to happen to you? That student loan letter is about to come in the mail saying, now is the time to pay, <laughs> right? If you've got student loans, don't think that this was just free money that was being given to you in college. You got to start paying that money back. And they will start looking for where you're living so that way they can find you and start sending letters in the mail to start trying to collect. You've got to take that first six months 
after you've graduated from college to take some time to actually put it into an emergency fund before the student loans begin to kick in, okay? So first one is getting that emergency fund, but the second thing, again, is expecting your student loans to start kicking in six months after you've graduated from college. Now, the best way to start making preparations for this to happen outside of your emergency fund is for you to begin to get organized. A lot of us get all of these bills that come in the mail, and because of the fact that we're not good with managing money, we feel overwhelmed. And that's the reason why I always have offered to you that free gift of the Empire Builder, because unbeknownst to you, in that Empire Builder gift, I'm actually giving you an organizer for free. I'm actually giving you a document already laid out that's going to show you how to be able to take, you know, the different debts that you have and how to be able to log it all organized in one central place. So that way you don't have to feel like, you know, you're dealing with all these phone calls. You got these letters coming in the mail. It's just too much to manage. You're still trying to live a life. So you got to start getting organized. If you're not organized, once it's time for these bills to be due, your life's going to be so all over the place, you're not even going to remember that the bill was due. And then some of you guys, you might find yourselves in default. You might find yourself having to do, you know, a hardship uh, deferral. You could find yourself in situations where your credit could end up becoming jeopardized all because of the fact that you were not staying on top of things in the first place. You got to get organized, okay? And the third and final thing that I want you to focus on in addressing the subject of what should you do after college is, I want you to be able to reverse engineer your life. Reverse engineer your life based upon where you ultimately want to end up rather than going off of your degree, okay? So here's what I mean by that. So I graduated, again, with a degree in information technology which should suggest that I would always be in a career associated with IT. But I did that. I graduated from college and I started working in an IT company. And as I was working at this IT company for a number of years, you know, when things first started going, I was feeling great. I was like, man, I made it. I spent my entire life working to get to this point. And one year was going after another year where I started to feel less and less satisfied. Suddenly, it went from me feeling like I had reached the pinnacle of my success to now I'm feeling overworked and underappreciated. Now I'm starting to feel marginalized. Up until the very grand moment where I had that moment of clarity where I said, Uzziah, just because of the fact that you like using a computer, it doesn't mean that your calling is to work in the computer industry for a computer company. It may just mean that you have to forge your own path where a computer becomes used in the process. Just like this, I'm using a computer as I am streaming these videos to you online. So I could have saved time off my life if I would have simply just had the conversation with myself. You know what, self? Where do you want to be when you're 60 years old? What do you want your life to look like when it's all said and done? What is it that you ultimately want to do? Yeah, you know, people will tell you that you're good at computers and you spend a lot of time on it, but do you ultimately want to leave a legacy about computers or do you want to leave a legacy about something else? This is the reason why you have to begin with the end in mind, like it says in the seven habits of highly effective people. You got to take a moment to assess what you ultimately want to do. And then you have to start working in the present moment to get to that end conclusion. Do not allow your degree to dictate to you where you should go in terms of your career path because that's going to be the ultimate setup. A lot of people are super miserable right now because they've graduated with a degree from college. They weren't sure if they wanted to major in that degree in the first place. And now that they've graduated and are in the real world trying to succeed in life, 
they're trying now to be able to make the most out of that degree, but making the most out of the degree might mean that you're in a job that you really can't stand. And for most college graduates, they know that they might have another calling in life, but they don't want to let go of their current nine to five job because they feel as though they squandered this investment that they made in themselves in their college education when really you shouldn't look at it that way. OK, don't let the tail wag the dog. It's up to you to decide what you want to do with your life long term. College is just but a short drop in the bucket. Use your degree to leverage the career path that you're going to go, not dictate the career path that you're going to go. I'm going to say that again. Use your degree to leverage the career path that you want to go, not dictate the career path that you want to go. So it's all good that I learned things that I learned about IT in college, and I'm using parts of that to help me run a business that requires some knowledge of technology. But it's not dictating my career path. Just because I have a degree in IT doesn't mean, Uzziah, you must work for an IT company or your life is over. When you can understand the difference between those two, I guarantee you, you're going to find yourself a lot more happier in life because right now you might be living out a narrative where you feel like you're forced to try to live out a path that you were supposed to live out that was told to you by your parents, um, you know, your family members, friends, college instructors, etc. But you actually have something else that you want to do. OK, so those are the top three things that you need to focus on in order to make your post collegiate life <laughs> successful. You need to make sure on number one, having an emergency fund in place before Sally Mae starts kicking in and giving your bank account the business. Number two. You need to make sure that by the time that Sally Mae does kick in, if you have student loan debt, you need to make sure that you are getting organized. Now is the time to start getting organized before things become more hectic, because as you get older, life can only be more demanding. Third and final point, reverse engineer. Don't let your college degree dictate where you need to be. Use your college degree as leverage, but you can only properly leverage it if you're already looking into the future, you're pondering on the legacy that you want to leave in your life, and then you ask yourself from there, how do you make that happen, and how can you leverage some of the things that you learn in college along the way to get you to your ultimate career path? Make sure that you download the Empire Builder to learn more about how to be able to set things up in the real world. Trust me, just because you were successful in college, it does not mean you're going to be successful in the real world. I know tons of people that I went to school with graduated from prestigious institutions and you don't hear about them anymore. Why? Because there's a big difference between academic success and real world success. Totally different playing field. Download the Empire Builder because there's a lot of things about real world success that you've never been taught in school. And you need to know it now rather than later after life starts to throw you different bumps and blows. Make sure that you subscribe, be your brother's keeper, and share this channel. And I'll see you on the next episode of Black Men's Career.